I, I didn't leave the orchestra world to pursue jazz necessarily. What jazz did for me is it really opened up my eyes and my ears to all the things that I really enjoyed doing as a performer. Um, and I enjoyed playing in orchestras as well, but there was obvious, it was obvious to me that where I really thrived and um, felt motivated musically was doing recitals that included jazz and included contemporary classical music. Um, but sort of the, the, the initiator of all that was making my first jazz CD and starting to work with musicians and realize how much I enjoyed those collaborations and they were so different from the orchestra world. <laughs> but jazz piano was kind of his instrument and then my older brother's a jazz bass player so I grew up listening to jazz just because I happened to pick an instrument that wasn't really a, a jazz instrument with a horn um, it ended up not stopping me I ended up playing electric bass in jazz bands starting in junior high all the way through high school and then I went to Northwestern and they needed jazz bass players so I got to play electric bass in jazz bands all the way through so it was really about you know as early as I can remember but certainly when I started playing instrumental music and as a 10 year old that I started you know, doing some jazz as well. Well then I just started listening and I started listening to you know records. You remember those? No. <laughs> well records are these around. <laughs> and so I would listen to Doc Severinsen and Don Ellis and um, Maynard Ferguson and I listened to all these jazz records and I really didn't I never took a lesson, really. I just listened a lot to it. And then when I was a senior in high school, mm -hmm. I just kept doing it. And I was in the jazz band, and we went to a jazz competition, mm -hmm. statewide jazz competition. And the next thing I know, I was awarded a trophy for being the outstanding all-state soloist. And I was so, so surprised. When I was in high school, I'd say that my passion was sort of divided between jazz and classical. Like, I... Uh, the first jazz I ever played was in freshman year, and it was this uh, like jazz band rehearsal. They were doing like a piece that was called like Brew Bossa or something. It was like a mock on Blue Bossa, and there just happened to be like a tuba part and a flute part and like a horn part. And my friend, who was this really annoying dude, but I have to thank him for getting me into jazz. He was like, "You got to come down." And play this part with us. So I did, and I remember it just being the funnest time I had ever had playing my horn. Even though all I was playing was like da da ba ba da, just for like two bars of the whole tune. Just to be there in that situation where music was an extremely fun thing for everyone to do was like, it was so different than playing offbeats. 
in band in sixth grade. So um, ever since that rehearsal, I knew I was going to like do both of these things. So I decided to teach the jazz horn class um, because it's something that I have to offer that's unique and that we can say that we offer at Michigan that's different. Um, that's one reason, but the other reason is I felt, I feel very strongly that my involvement in jazz was a real key for me to be successful in classical music. Um, finding a way to express myself and feel comfortable on the instrument outside of classical and then to be able to relate that back to classical was really important for me. So, um, you know, we have a couple of students that actually we can say the same thing about here right now in Dan Remy and, and Joe Lesperance where I'm able to say, Dan, play it like a jazz ballad but just don't sound like a jazzer and he can actually start to play a glier or mezzo or something like that uh, more successfully. So it doesn't work that way for everyone. If you've come from a classical background and jazz is not comfortable for you, you're, it probably isn't going to have that same effect. But just the mere fact that I spend most of the class with them off the page, using their ears, playing in a different way, I think all I can really do is open up their playing, open up their sound, and uh, give them more possibilities on the instrument. So I'm not trying, I'm not really not trying to create jazz horn players, but just trying to give people a different experience. And uh, I think generally we have a good time in there, but most people in that class have never improvised before the first session, and they improvise every day that we that we meet. So it's it's nice to see them kind of loosen up over time. And we always bring a live rhythm section into the last class, and it's always a good time. Well, I was really interested in taking a course with Professor Onsworth because he is probably the most famous jazz horn player of um, this generation. And I was really interested in learning how to improv. I'd never really done that before. <laughs>